What's up? So a couple weeks ago, I went to Lynchburg, Virginia for a business meeting with a client and I showed up a few hours early so that I could go downtown and do a little POV photo walk, which I have posted here on the channel. You can watch it right here. Check it out if you'd like to. So in that video, you'll see that there weren't many people out and about. So I had to try and figure out what I wanted to take photos of since there weren't a lot of humans. And when I think of street photography, I'm thinking of what humans are doing in the world around them in a street urban kind of area. It doesn't have to be street photography. It could be a ton of things to many different people, but that's what I think about. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the process of what I did in light of the fact that there weren't many people out and about. But before we dive in, I just wanted to tell you that this channel is all about photography, strictly photography. I have big plans for this channel. I'm just sort of getting started. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, please feel free to do so. And if you like this video, smash like so that we can absolutely destroy the algorithm. But without further ado, let's dive into the photos that I chose for my photo journal on my website, which you can find down below, and why I chose what I did from this street photography session that I had in Lynchburg, Virginia. So this was actually one of the first photos that I took as I was like getting out of my car and starting downtown. I took this one before I even turned my GoPro camera on. And this is kind of one of my favorites from the day, mostly because I think in this gallery, there's only three people total. And this guy was just, I don't know, working. It's not the most amazing photo, but from what I was able to get that day, um, this was one of them. So it was about 11 a.m. So there weren't a lot of people out and about and catching people doing something in this environment uh, when most people were probably inside working. It was a little bit cold that day too. Um, you'll find if you look at my channel, all my videos, I have kind of decided to stick with this red theme. I think red is a color that really pops on Fujifilm, on Ricoh. There's a certain kind of red color people love about these cameras and their film simulations. And so I decided to just kind of really lean into it. And I think red also is just one of those colors that catches your eye very easily. And as a sort of novice street photographer, I've been a professional photographer for a while, but actually getting out in the street and photograph photographing people in, in how they're interacting with the environment. Red is one of those colors that just grabs your attention. So this sort of became the hero image, I guess, of this um, photo journal, photo diary entry. And um, I just liked it. So here's the same truck. I did like, there's a couple things here I'd love to show you. So obviously that red is there as well. Um, something that I really liked, let me get a different color here, maybe yellow. So. I liked how you can read what this says here. This is like a, um, some kind of, uh, what do you call them? I guess like a pawn shop or something. And it says jewelry, music, guns through the window of this Coca-Cola truck. There's really not much like really punny or playing on words here, but I just think it's funny. Those things are listed through the window of this truck. Again, not an amazing image, but just something I kind of liked. I liked the red. Um, Coca-Cola is such a strong brand as well. I wanted to photograph it. So again, when there's not many people out, I think my eyes tend to just look for colors, for honestly just things that catch my attention. If something catches my attention, then there's something about it. There's a reason that happened and I want to take a photo of it. This is one of those, it was just a really cool old looking door on this, you know, building just made of stone and um, this beautifully carved stone. I used the tree that was on the sidewalk as a bit of a, a framing here. Let me see. So, you know, naturally I think the subject in this, if there is to be a subject, is this door right here. And something that I did was I kind of used this tree here to frame it in a similar way with similar sort of negative space as the stone there. So. Nothing crazy. This is just what I was doing in the moment. And I liked the color of that door. And I love the way this film sim um, presents that greenish, bluish, tealish color. So this is obviously a big, a big sort of monument in downtown uh, Lynchburg. Um, you've got this soldier right here. And there were some people on the stairs, which from as far away as I was, I couldn't even really tell what was going on, but 
I somehow naturally kind of caught them evenly spaced. Uh, and you do have this kind of triangle uh, going on here with the statue up there as well. You've got this guy, the stairs just kind of, I talk about this all the time, but I love symmetry and there's a lot of symmetry in architecture a lot of the time. So I love any situation like this where I can just have close to perfect symmetry. And when I'm cropping, I try to get close to perfect symmetry as well. But I, I enjoyed this. I think I got, no, I didn't show it. Um, I got another picture of a lady walking by. Um, she wasn't in the best sort of gait or like um, stride. So, and she knew I was taking her picture and she tried to run by, which happens a lot of the time. She's like, oh, sorry, and then runs by. Um, so I tried to capture that in there, but it didn't turn out so hot. So I really like this. I like that there are actually people here and there's this cool, which I kind of already talked about. There's this cool sort of diamond effect going on. You've got these two people, that statue, that statue. This is kind of visual. If the, if the image is big enough where you can actually make out that there are people there, it's kind of a cool little pattern going on. This one was just something I was doing on this day was if I saw someone who is fairly interesting as a person in an interesting setting, I just took a picture of it. And this one's kind of hard to see uh, unless the picture's a little bit bigger. But this dude right here <laughs> was walking and I got a nice um, stride and he was sort of centered and you know, there's a lot going on here. You've got these leading lines up to that person. I would even consider this somewhat of a leading line all pointing to that stop sign really. And then you have also that stop sign there, which is nice. I don't want to dive in too deep and make this picture seem cooler than it is. I just, I, this was one of those sort of, wow. UPS is here. So I don't want to try to make this picture something more than it is. It's just sort of a happy mistake or not even a mistake. I mean, I intentionally click the shutter, but sometimes you get images just kind of like, this was just kind of like, boom, like really quick. Um, and I was actually able to catch this person in real time doing their thing, which is super cool. This is something that interested me. There was a reflection off the building behind, or I guess I was kind of walking down the street. There was a reflection going across this alleyway, um, which was interesting. I enjoyed this building back here too, with all of its lines. I took another picture where this was actually, like I tilted the image so that the car didn't look like it was on an incline, the, build, the whole building looked like it was, and I've seen people do that with places, like I think San Francisco has a lot of really steep roads, and people will like um, tilt the image so that the road is flat, and then everything else, and that was kind of my thinking there. It didn't turn out super great, but I liked the play on, you know, obviously this graffiti and then this sort of light, and then I had this happy little light beam, um, whatever you call it, lens flare um, going on there too, which, there's not a lot of color here. This would probably work better as a black and white. Um, I do like this pop of red um, right here, but um, you know, it is what it is. I Something that you'll find is I'm really into JPEG shooting right now. So whatever the camera spits out, that's what I get. And um, I'm thinking about doing a challenge here in the future where I do a photo walk and I turn off the back screen display either on the Fujifilm or maybe the Ricoh and I'm pointing and shooting and guessing and whatever I get, I get. I don't even have a chance to sort of chimp and look at the image right after I take it. This was a little bit further down the road, just more light play here. Uh, again, centering everything was big. I loved the shadows uh, and sort of the patterns that were at play there. Nothing crazy, but I, I think it's interesting as a street photographer, when you're used to looking for people and how people are interacting with other people, with themselves, with the environment, if you take out the people, what do you focus on? And you have to divert your attention. And that was sort of the exercise here was, I started to look for color, I started to look for light and how the light was playing. The light wasn't in a very, the sun wasn't in a very good position for photography as well. So I was having to find instances like this where there were just peeps and pops of, light against the shadow. Uh, like I said, it was about 11 a.m. This obviously caught my attention, just a ton of color. Um, this image isn't centered. It's slightly off and skewed, and I tried to like fix it 
with cropping and tilting and panning and whatever you can do. And uh, really, if I do any editing on any of these photos, it's right here in the Apple Photos app. Um, I don't throw these in the Lightroom. I'm really just a fan of what you get is what you get. And something like this, it was so close to being symmetrical that I wanted it to be, but I ended up just undoing all my cropping edits and just letting it be as it was. And it's fine. It has character, right? So I like that. This was just funny. Again, no human is in this image, but you can see where humans had an effect on what happened here. Someone put these in a circle around this tree. I thought it was pretty funny. So I snapped a photo with it. Again, there's some play on shadow in there, but nothing crazy. I just thought it was kind of a funny image. I'm a huge Tesla fan, so whenever I see a Tesla, if there's some sort of situation where I can take a photo of it and it looks cool, I do. This was the best one I got. I took a bunch of photos. If you watch the POV photo walk, it's probably kind of annoying because I'm just like fangirling over it and taking pictures of every aspect of the car, but this was my favorite. So, and on that cobblestone is a really nice look. I don't love this image. I think it would have been better landscape probably, but I liked the car. This was a interesting thing. I don't have like a, a, a more pulled out version of this. Um, let me make sure, yeah. Uh, these were like, it was kind of windy and these hello my name is stickers were all over the ground and in these bikes and I just think it's funny. There was something comical about there being a bunch of those stickers everywhere and no person to be found. So um, I don't know, it had that red, it went against the blue of the bike there and I took it. Uh, just interesting to me. This was just another attempt to, to find some sort of patterns in light and shadow. Um, nothing crazy here. I just liked the way the, the light was just coming down that shallow sidewalk um, in a little beam there. So I liked that image. Uh, this whole alleyway or street is painted and colorful but it was all in shadow and this was sort of the only right at the edge near like main street or whatever street this was was the only sort of light popping through that i could actually get those vibrant colors um so i snapped this i just liked this sort of the parallel of the um the shadow line and then the end of or the intersection of the street uh, that's kind of it, and then you have that kind of on a third line, the manhole painted orange, which is interesting. This kind of bothered me, this trash can at first, but I actually kind of like it now, so whatever. I liked what I saw. <laughs> uh, this is another sort of interesting monument sightseeing thing. The light was just bathing the statue really cool, and so I got a, a couple different versions of this. This one's probably my favorite because you have that symmetry. You have these two awnings kind of coming and This is all right. Like I, I didn't do anything special here. And I talk about this in the POV video as well. If you just take a picture of a picture or you take a picture of a statue, I don't know that there is much art that was created in that image. Now the lighting, the play on the lighting, I think you could argue in that, that you're making a new piece of art. But sometimes to like, just, you know, there's these clouds up here in the sky. Sometimes it's just good to take a picture to remember something. And I think with my photo journals, it's that sort of first priority is like, I want to remember the photo walk that I took or the coffee shop I visited or the restaurant I went to. And so I want to take those pictures when it comes to like, is this good street photography? Is this good photography? I don't think so. <laughs> I just took a picture of a statue, right? And I, it was a happy sort of shadowy situation with the harsh light, which is cool. But here in you know, the next one, I think there's some amount of art or artistic ability that went into taking these photos, but I'm constantly, especially when I'm out on the street, like thinking, you know, if I take a picture of a mural, like, am I doing anything fantastic there? I don't, I don't think so. But if I take a picture of a mural of someone with a Kleenex and right in front of that mural is someone blowing their nose or sneezing, 
that's funny. That's an instance that I created something or I snapped that piece of life that wasn't there with just the mural, right? So sometimes you just take things because they look pleasing, they look nice to you. Uh, I wouldn't consider this anything special um, in, in terms of art, but these are things I'm thinking about and I, go, <laughs> I think about this stuff and I go really deep with it and I don't know that I should. This is, this is sort of part of my point here is this is just a picture of window on a building and the designer designed the building to look this cool, right? I didn't do anything to make this look cool by taking a picture of it. However, there's light at play here that wasn't designed. It wasn't already there. I mean, it was there, but you can see I was there at that point in that time where the sun was doing this thing and it was casting this sort of shape, this shadow, this triangle around a circle, around you know this the rest of the building here's another little triangle but what i tried to do here is that caught my eye first this reflection is what makes the image because that is something where i positioned myself i didn't take the most head-on symmetrical image i wanted to and i did it's not in this gallery but it's one of my shots but what I actually did was I sort of refocused and I was able to sort of frame the reflection of the telephone pole behind me in this window. That's cool. And I think that makes this picture so much better than just a picture of the building itself. Um, so things like this are what, I'm, are what I'm trying to do, right? And again, this is in lieu in light of the fact there weren't many people out and about. So I'm trying to think how can I take images that are different, uh, unique. Um, which is what you know, I think we're all trying to do and as I grow as a photographer in general as a street photographer More and more of this is what I want to get into this more of the same. Uh, I didn't put this bike here um, But the bike was funny and interesting to me and I think there's something to be said You know along with everything I've said so far about my approach to street photography trying to find aspects of things being different not just taking pictures of art, but trying to use the camera to bring about something new and different. Um, there's also something to be said in street photography, and I think some of our, some of the best street photographers are older street photographers, like in the 60s, right, on Fifth Avenue, Joel Meyerowitz or um, Gary Winogrand. Um, a lot of their pictures are just people doing kind of different stuff, but the fact that they're from the 60s is why we like them. It has the nostalgia, the history. So sometimes if I just see something funny like this bike that just is uh, really tall, <laughs> that's funny to me and I'll take a picture of it. Um, just again, to remember it for my own purposes. If someone sees this, they go, ha that's funny. Bringing to light also something someone else did to be funny uh, is interesting too. I don't know, there's a lot that can go into this stuff and I don't mean to dive in too deep to it. In old shoes, I just liked the the rusty streaks down the building. The fact that probably when this building was made, it was just completely white. You know, just a white tiled building, which is so cool and probably aesthetically pleasing to look at. But with age, it's turned into this, and I liked seeing that weathering, um, and just the shoes brand, which I don't see much of anymore. Um, which is cool. And I don't even know if that's still a Shules or if it's just sort of a historical landmark at this point. One of the last photos, again, it was a person. Um, it took me a second to figure out how I wanted to compose this shot. I took a few different shots. Um, at first I was trying to center this thing, uh, which is where your eyes kind of naturally go to. This isn't a, a great image at all. I kind of wish there was some sort of mural or something there. So anyway, that was the final image and I really like this one. Final image here, really just reaching for anything that caught my eye. I mean, I walked around for an hour or so um, and didn't get a whole lot, so it's always nice to get a bird flying in the sky. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you learned something or at least just enjoyed hearing me blab on about 
my photography and the way I go about doing things. I'm interested to know if you all are having trouble, if you're a street photographer and you like taking pictures of people specifically, what do you do when there aren't many people? Um, what are some methods? I think another thing a lot of people will look for is just ways that humans have interacted with the environment around them. So maybe some sort of trash on the sidewalk or some kind of graffiti or an image left behind or like remnants of a party that happened, something like that. I'm interested to know. So um, more than anything, I want this channel to be a place where I can present my photography and then where we can discuss photography. You know, I'm trying to grow. I'm sure you all are trying to grow in your photography as well. So if we can learn from one another, have open discussions, I'd love to hear it. If you have any suggestions on how we can do that better, maybe live streams. I'm very interested in this channel and growing it and meeting new photographers and just talking about all things photography, specifically street, journalistic, documentarian kind of photography, but I love all types of photography. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. There's gonna be loads more videos like this coming in the future, and I appreciate you. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.